That is the hope to all who seek. That is the way when moments are bleak. So look up to the skies, the light of Jesus Christ, and all who we seek will find. Na -na -na. Dear friends, the topic for today is Sacraments Celebration of Faith. Every religion, whether organized or not organized, has some rituals to be performed. And these rituals are usually rites of initiation in a religious community or at the time of marriage, etc. In Catholicism, we have seven sacraments of the church in order to understand the seven sacraments of the church we first have to understand the sacramentality of christ and the sacramentality of the church but before i proceed further let me give you a generic understanding of the term sacrament the term sacrament has been derived from the greek word Mysterion, which means something hidden but slowly revealed. Since the Latin term translation Mysterion would have been Mysterium, and since the term Mysterium would not convey the correct meaning of Mysterion, Tertullian used the Latin term sacramentum to translate mysterion sacramentum means a initiation ceremony into the roman army since the sacraments were primarily sacraments of initiation into the church sacraments came to be known in latin as sacramentum and from there, the English translation came to be sacrament. Basing on the understanding of Mysterion and Sacramentum, St. Augustine of Hippo defined the sacrament as the visible sign of the invisible grace. This means that what is invisible to the human eye or what cannot be experienced by human senses is made visible and experiential by tangible matter. Hence, grace which is invisible is made visible and can be experienced by the use of a specific sign. This specific sign, which is theologically called matter, when used with proper words, which is theologically called form, together with the intention of doing what the church wants us to do, causes grace. Hence, for each of the seven sacraments, the church has given a specific sign or matter and specific words or form which cause grace and this grace is called sacramental grace now let us briefly dwell on the sacramentality of christ we believe that jesus christ is the second person of the trinity but the revelation of the trinitarian god was made possible only because of the incarnation of jesus christ in the prologue of the gospel according to John, we read, The word became a human being and full of grace and truth and lived among us. And in Colossians we find, His humanity is visible form 
of the invisible God. Hence, the invisible Christ as the second person of the triune God became the sacrament of God in his incarnation. We profess in the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed that Jesus Christ is begotten from God and was made man. And the Council of Chalcedon defined that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity having two natures, truly human, truly divine. The sacramentality of Jesus Christ is expressed in many sayings of Jesus. For example, whoever sees me sees the Father. The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains that human Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior. Therefore, Jesus is the Mysterion, the Sacramentum, because He is partially revealed and will be totally revealed at the Parousia. Secondly, the Sacramentality of the Church. Jesus continues his mission of salvation in and through the church. The Second Vatican Council in the documents Lumen Gentium and Ad Gentes describes that the church is a kind of the sacrament of intimate unity with God and humanity. This teaching of the church has basis in the three biblical images of the church namely first people of God second body of Christ third temple of the Holy Spirit it is through these images that the church becomes the visible sign of the invisible Christ Paul calls the church the new people of God because a new covenant has been established and Lumen Gentium dedicates the full chapter 2 to explain that the church is the people of God. Paul also calls the church the body of Christ because Christ is the head of the church and Lumen Gentium states that the body of Christ subsists in the Roman Catholic Church. The church is the temple of the Holy Spirit because it is through the descent of the Holy Spirit the church was born and the church is filled with gifts, fruits and charisms of the Holy Spirit. Hence, the church is the mysterion sacramentum of Christ which is partially revealed but will be fully revealed as the new Jerusalem mentioned in the book of Revelation. Thirdly, sacraments as celebration of faith. Every religion has three basic pillars, creed, core of ethics, and rituals. The creed constitutes the fundamental tenets of one's faith. The code of ethics constitutes the ways for living of that faith. The rituals are celebrations of that faith. As we have said in the beginning of this lecture that every religion there are some rituals. These rituals are usually rites of initiation in the religious community or at the time of marriage etc. For example, we have samskaras in Hinduism, kitan or sunnat in Islam, pahul in Sikhism, etc. In Catholicism, we have the sacraments of the church. However, let us remember, they are called not just sacraments, but sacraments of the church. I repeat, sacraments of the church because 
Christ instituted them in and for the church and they are celebrated in the church. If you read the Acts of the Apostles, the core message of the charismatic speeches of Peter is to believe, to repent and be baptized. Those baptized grouped themselves in the community which came to be called the church and which had the four basic characteristics, namely, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to fellowship, to breaking of the bread, and to prayer. As the message of Jesus Christ began to spread, church communities began to come into existence in different places, although there were cultural, linguistic differences, as well as affiliation to the traditions of the early religion. All expressed their faith in Jesus Christ through the profession of the faith called the creeds. We have many creeds, but two main ones are the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. In the letters of St. Paul and other letters in the New Testament, we find the disciples were exhorted to maintain and live a certain way of life befitting the commitment of faith to Christ. And finally, the faithful wanted to celebrate their Christian faith and life. In response, various rituals began to emerge according to the geographical and cultural situation of the church. Hence, we have the Roman Rite, the Gallic Rite, the Ambrosian Rite in the West, the Armenian Rite, the Antiochian Rite, the Alexandrian Rite in the East. It was the one faith that was expressed through various rituals. This led to certain misinterpretations and heresies, all claiming their origin in Christ and faithfulness to the church. Hence, the rituals had to be systematized. The Council of Florence in the 15th century against the wrong teachings of the Greeks and Armenians thought that there were seven sacraments of the new law, namely baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, if extreme unction, orders, and matrimony, which differ greatly from the sacraments of the old law. The latter were not causes of grace, but prefigured the grace to be given through the passion of Jesus Christ. Whereas the former, ours, both contain grace and bestow it on those who worthily receive them. The first five of these are directed to the spiritual perfection of each person in himself. The last two to the regulation and increase of the whole church. In the 16th century, when the Protestant Reformation denied that the sacraments can cause grace, the Council of Trent defined as a dogma. Whoever affirms that sacraments of the new covenant are not all instituted by Jesus Christ or that they are more than seven or less than seven of them, that is, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, anointing of the sick, orders and marriage, or that one of the seven is not properly and really a sacrament, let him be anathema, meaning let him be condemned. Hence, three characteristics of the sacraments of the church could not be denied 
or rejected by Catholics. First, that the sacraments of the new covenant are instituted by Christ and by the apostles and not by the apostles or the church. Second, that there are only seven sacraments, namely baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, anointing of the sick, orders and marriage. And third, that each of the seven sacraments cause grace called sacramental grace. This was against the reformers who accepted only baptism and Eucharist as sacraments. But even these two, they said, did not cause grace, but only nourish our faith. At this moment, let us briefly discuss, deal with these three important characteristics. First, the sacraments of the new covenant are instituted by Christ. We do not find explicit references in the Gospels about Jesus instituting each of the seven sacraments. But Jesus is the origin and the source from whom all the sacraments come into existence. Jesus' sacramentality is manifested in the sacraments. Second, there are only seven sacraments, namely baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, anointing of the sick, orders and marriage. No one can add or delete any of these seven sacraments. Now comes the question, why only seven? And why only these names for the sacraments? We shall follow the so-called phenomenological approach. Difficult word. Every human person has seven main stages of life. Birth, growth, nourishment, corals and reconciliation, sickness and healing, authority and procreation. These seven stages of human life are sanctified by means of each of the seven sacraments. Let us see. Birth is sanctified by the sacrament of baptism, which gives new birth in Christ. Growth is sanctified by the sacrament of confirmation, which brings maturity of faith. Nourishment is sanctified by the sacrament of communion, which gives spiritual nourishment. Human corals and reconciliation is sanctified by the sacrament of penance and reconciliation, which brings about forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with God and neighbor. Human sickness and healing are sanctified by the sacrament of anointing of the sick which brings about spiritual as well as physical healing. Every human community is governed by an authority. This authority is sanctified by the sacrament of orders, which is characterized by authority in service. Human species has to be continued. Hence, procreation is sanctified by the sacrament of marriage, which is based on the covenant of love and the formation of a family. Let's go forward. Each of the seven sacraments cause grace, called sacramental grace. Every sacrament to be validly celebrated has matter and form. Only when valid matter is used, and correct words are used, sacrament will produce grace, which is proper to that sacrament. For example, for baptism, the matter is natural water 
and the form is putting the name I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For confirmation, the matter is chrism void and the form is be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. For Eucharist, the matter is unleavened bread and grape wine. The form is the invocation of the Holy Spirit and the words of consecration. For penance and reconciliation, the matter is called quasi-matter, which is the sins, and the form is the formula of absolution. For anointing of the sick, the matter is the oil of the sick, and the form is the prayer said while anointing the forehead and the palm of the hands. For orders, the matter is laying on of hands by the bishop and the form is the prayer of consecration. For marriage, the matter is holding on of, of hands by the man and woman and the form is the formula of consent. My dear friends, the seven sacraments can be divided into three groups according to the sacramental grace that they cause. Firstly, the sacraments of initiation and they are baptism, confirmation and Eucharist. Before the infant or child baptism was started in the church, only adults were initiated in the church by means of the sacraments of initiation. After a process called catechumenate, the bishop would celebrate the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil Eucharist. Even today, in certain dioceses in India, adults are initiated into the church by means of the sacraments of initiation. Second group, sacraments of healing. They are penance and reconciliation and anointing of the sick. They are called sacraments of healing because they help us to recognize the wrong done and bring about a healing with God and neighbor and a healing of the whole person. Third group, sacraments of vocation and mission. They are orders and marriage. They are called sacraments of vocation and mission because God has to call a person to this state of life and those called have a mission. The orders have the mission of service and love and marriage has the mission of covenant of love and family. My dear friends, we can make another division of the seven sacraments, namely the sacraments of the living and the sacraments of the dead. The sacraments of the dead are baptism and penance and reconciliation. They are called sacraments of the dead because one is dead to grace. The sacramental grace of these two sacraments gives the person the life of faith and grace. The remaining five sacraments are called sacraments of the living because one has to be in the state of grace in order to receive them. Therefore, one should have faith and a life of grace to receive the sacramental grace. When is a sacrament causes grace and when does the grace becomes effective for the recipient of the sacrament. Let us go back to a little history. In the 4th century, there arose a heresy called Donatism, which thought that the sacraments celebrated 
by a sinful minister is invalid and does not cause grace. St. Augustine condemned this heresy and thought that the efficacy of the sacrament does not depend on the sanctity of the minister but on the valid celebration of the sacrament. This teaching was declared a dogma by the Council of Trent which said that the efficacy of the sacrament is ex opera operato on those who do not put any obstacles. Let me explain this dogma that has two parts. First, ex opera operato means that when valid matter and form are used by the minister with the intention of doing what the church does, the grace is automatically caused in and through the matter. For example, when a priest uses natural water and pronounces the correct words, God causes the grace to come in and through the water to the recipient of the baptism, even if the priest is in mortal sin. Second part, on those who do not put any obstacle means that if the recipient is in sin, then even if the sacrament has caused grace, it will not have any effect on the recipient. It will become effective only when the obstacle is removed. It is like pouring water in a closed jar. Only when the lid is removed, the water will go in. Hence, my dear friends, as I conclude this lecture, we should remember, firstly, to try and study the sacraments so that the rituals do not turn into ritualism and superstition. Secondly, to prepare ourselves worthily so that all obstacles are removed and we are filled with the sacramental grace. Thirdly, to make sacraments genuine celebrations of our faith. Thank you and God bless you.